Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here and Apple just released macOS Ventura Beta 3. I'm going to go over all the changes and fixes in this update along with a brand new feature called Lockdown Mode that is available for macOS, iPadOS, and iOS. We got a lot more to cover so you're going to want to stick around. Let's jump in and get started. Apple released Ventura Beta 3 on July 6, 2022. On the Mac side, we also got a brand new version of Xcode Beta 3 and then we still do not have a studio display firmware update on the iOS side side for 16, we got beta 3 for iOS, iPadOS, watchOS 9, tvOS, and audiOS. On Tuesday, Apple released the production beta versions of Monterey, Big Sur, and Catalina, and iOS 15.6, watchOS 8.7, and tvOS and audiOS. To update to Ventura Beta 3, all you need to do is open up the new system settings menu and then go into general and then click on software update. You're going to see a brand new area in here that's going to show the automatic update settings. You'll see whether it is enrolled in a developer seed or a public beta seed here and you can check the details setting and then restore back to defaults and then you'll see the beta update right here in this area and then you can click on update here to be able to update to macOS Ventura Beta 3. How long did it take to install the beta 3 update? Well, that's an interesting question because if you didn't see my previous video that went into a deep dive on how Apple improved the software update mechanism and the upgrade mechanism made it a lot faster on M1. So if you haven't seen this video explaining that, take a look at that because it's a really nice improvement. So when I installed it on this M1 Mac mini, the preparation time was normal, the download time was normal, but once that was finished, it only took four minutes and seven seconds from restart to a usable desktop. On the T2, for example, over here, it took 16 to 17 minutes to do that actual update when it rebooted. So the updates are a lot faster on M1. And it's a really wonderful change here in how Apple improved that process. Once you get to macOS Ventura Beta 3, the build version has changed to 22A5295H. And I always go over the build version because Apple doesn't really show you which beta version that you're on. When you go to About This Mac, it only just says macOS Ventura Beta. It doesn't say which beta, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have to look at the build version to know that, hey, I'm on beta two or on beta one. And if you're still unsure, you can actually go to my website and I'll show you the link of all the different installers here. As you see right here, I show in the release history every single build number and there'll be at least 10 to 12 different versions of Ventura beta before the beta releases cycle is over. So that's how you can see which beta version you're on. In beta 3, Apple updated the M1 firmware to 113.0.1 and the Apple Silicon OS loader version was also updated to the same version. On previous versions like on Monterey and Big Sur, they are 1,000 less. So on Monterey it's 7,000 and on Big Sur it's 6,000. Apple also updated the T2 Bridge OS to 329.5.5 and there was also a Safari update to 19.1.5. Apple released a M1 IPSW firmware file to be able to restore M1s with Apple Configurator 2. And for the full installer, Apple has not released it yet, but they usually release it the next day or today. So you'll see that update here so you can download the full installer for USB creation or upgrades. When Apple releases a new beta, I always go to the beta developer notes here and then go over all of the fixes, deprecations, and new features and then put them into a quick summary on my site so you get a better understanding of what the beta release entails. So for example, there's no new features in this release even though there is and I'm going to go over them later. There's 56 known issues, 3 resolved issues, 4 deprecations or things that are going to be removed in the future. And on the enterprise side for schools and businesses, there's 7 resolved all the issues and two notes that you're going to want to take a look at in the Apple Seed Notes section. Now let's go over some new Beta 3 features and one of the biggest ones is Lockdown Mode. Apple's made this new Lockdown Mode feature available for iOS 16, iPadOS 16, and macOS Ventura and it's Beta 3 and newer. 
Apple is previewing a groundbreaking security capability that offers specialized additional protection to users who may be at risk of highly targeted cyber attacks from private companies developing state-sponsored mercenary software. So let's take a look. This is what it would look like on iPhone. And now let's go over to our M1 to see what it looks like on macOS Ventura. Now to get to that new feature, all we need to do is go into the new system settings application and then go into privacy and security and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and we see our brand new lockdown mode. Let's take a look at what it says. Lockdown mode is an extreme optional protection that should be only used if you believe that you are personally targeted by a highly sophisticated cyber attack. Most people are never targeted by attacks of this nature. When the Mac is in lockdown mode, it will not function as it typically does. Apps, websites, and features will be strictly limited for security and some experiences will be completely unavailable. So let's try that out. Let's click on turn on here. And then first thing we're gonna need to do is enter in an administrator password. And then we'll hit modify settings. The next thing is, it's gonna give us another warning. Turn on lockdown mode. When a Mac is in lockdown mode, apps, websites, features are strictly limited for security, just like the other one said. To turn on lockdown mode, you need to restart your Mac. So let's turn it on and restart. Okay, we're back up, let's log in. Now, once we're back in, there's no obvious way to show that we're in lockdown mode. If we look here, we don't see anything in the menu bar up here, but we do see if we go back into privacy and security here and we scroll down, we now have a turn off button. But when we go back to our screen here where we are looking at the options, we can get a better view of what it is now protecting on this Mac. For example, messages. Most message attachment types other than images are blocked. Some features like link previews are disabled. Web browsing, certain complex web technologies like just-in-time JavaScript are disabled unless the user excludes as a trusted site from lockdown mode. Apple services, incoming invitations and service requests including FaceTime calls are blocked if the user has not previously sent the person a call or request. Wired connections with a computer or accessory are blocked when iPhone is locked. So maybe that might block, for example, the devices that are made to try to get into the device when it is in lockdown mode. That could be really interesting. Configuration profiles cannot be installed on the device and cannot enroll in mobile device management while lockdown mode is turned on. Now I did some testing around this and you can still send out configuration profiles and make changes to configuration profiles, but you cannot enroll your device device into an MDM management server. And maybe that's to protect the user from accidentally clicking on a profile and then having a state-sponsored hacker control your iPhone or your Mac. So it's a really great feature. And I know Apple makes this look like it's only for really secure events for these highly targeted people, but I can actually see this in situations like maybe you're going to a, a conference and you want to keep your Mac 100% secure, turn this on and you can't hurt. So let's go back to Safari and take a look at what that looks here. Well, the first thing we're going to know right away is we see lockdown mode is enabled in Safari. So we see that that's an indication right away that it is activated on Safari. So if you want to look at those settings, all you need to do is go up to Safari to settings here and then click on websites and then scroll down here to lockdown mode and you'll see some of the settings here for lockdown mode. But this gives us a quick overview of the brand new feature that I think is really awesome. The next new feature is around Stage Manager. As you can see here in Beta 3, we've got a new section for Stage Manager that's not in the previous beta. So let's take a closer look at the feature. If we go over here, it says Stage Manager arranges your recent windows into a single strip for reduced clutter and quick access. So if we go into Customize here, we can see that we have the strip here on the side and we can also turn on the desktop items over here and then click on Done for those settings and we can actually turn on the feature right here. In beta 3, the appearance section here in system settings was updated. The beta 2 had the old Monterey background and beta 3 was finally fixed with Ventura background image. The notification section was also changed. You can see that there's some app notifications that were 
taken out and then added. There was this weird APFS user agent that was removed, but also a new clean drive section here notification was added to the full list here. Apple has also changed the network pane. If we look on beta two, we have an add service button that lets us add service, add VPN configuration and manage virtual interfaces. On beta three, there's now a drop down box and a help box that'll give us some more information once it's available in the help section. But if we go back here to the drop down button, we now have an option to set the service order. Setting the service order means that if I have Wi-Fi and ethernet connected and I want the ethernet to take presence over the Wi-Fi, I can set the ethernet to top of the service priority box. The screen time pane was also updated if we see here in beta two and then in beta three, now we have a use screen time passcode that we can turn on to use a passcode when the screen time settings and allow for more time when limits expire. The next change is in general under login items. Login items are for things that you wanna have start up like applications as start as you as soon as you log into your Mac. But there's a change here to the wording under here. It used to be login items added by apps, and now it's changed to allow in background. The text has also changed a little bit here. This, the first part is the same, but it says turning off a background item may prevent these tasks from being completed to turning an item off may prevent these features from working. But there is a change in security and privacy pane. Obviously, we got the lockdown mode in beta three, and we don't see that over here in beta two, but keep an eye on this new option here called allow accessories to connect. But notice how it's not over here on the Mac mini. And that's because that protection is only there for laptops right now. So let's show you what that looks like when we try to plug in a USB drive to our MacBook Pro here. We got a new pop-up here that says allow accessory to connect. Do you want to connect this USB accessory to this Mac? Allow or disallow. And that's supposed to protect you against plugging in a USB drive or something that could cause harm to your Mac. That's a nice new security feature in Mac OS Ventura. Still no change in the wallpaper section. We're still waiting on a dynamic desktop for Mac OS Ventura. We only have the light and dark desktop mode right now. And in beta three, we're still waiting on a Mac OS Ventura screensaver that'll show up right in this section once it becomes available. We also have a few changes to the lock screen pane here. You can see that the icon has changed between beta two and beta three. And we also have a change to the show message when locked section here. When we turn this on in beta two, and turn this on in beta three, we see that the set lock message has changed just to set. I did notice a small change here in the users and groups pane. You can set a user on the system to automatically log in once the system is set up. You can see in beta two that I have this set for being able to set the test, being able to do that. But for some reason on beta three, it's you can't select this. So I'm not totally sure if that's a bug or something else is going on. Here. Next thing you'll notice is under the trackpad settings is that we now have videos in previous versions of Mac OS like Monterey and lower, there was always some videos showing you how to use the trackpad or mouse functions. Those have been added back to the trackpad pane. The next new feature is in the photos app. You can see over here in beta two, it's just shared with you memories and visual lookup. In beta three, we have shared library. Combine photos and videos with people closest to you and automatically share new photos from camera. We also have copy and paste edits, save time by making edits to one photo and then applying those changes to other photos with just a click and merge duplicates quickly and finally merge all of your duplicate photos and videos from one central place. Now let's go over some known issues in beta three. I always go through the notes and there's a bunch of stuff in here having to do with Xcode and AppKit and stuff like that. So I pick out the ones that are important to you. For example, this one right here under kernel management known issues. Users on Apple Silicon M1 Max may experience a kernel panic when updating to Mac OS 13 Ventura. And the workaround for that is to restart into Mac OS recovery and change the security policy to full security. So for example, if you had your security policy set to reduced, you might be panicking right now and wondering what the heck is going on. So set that to full security, it should fix that issue. But once that issue is fixed, you should be able to go back into reduced security if you're doing any kind of testing. 
The next thing is around the DVD player. Can you believe that the DVD player is still in Mac OS Ventura? And I'm happy about that because if you want to be able to watch a movie, maybe on a plane trip or a car ride, you can still do it because the DVD player app is still there. But there's an issue on Beta 3. DVD player crashes on launch on Intel-based Mac computers. So if you want to be able to use the DVD player, it's still here and it's located in System Library Core Services Applications. So it still fires up just fine on M1. But if we go to our Intel device over here and take a look at that, it's going to have a problem. So we'll double click on that and it immediately crashes. So hopefully they get that fixed for Intel devices. The issue is, is that Beta 2 introduced a problem with the Wi-Fi interface trying to get the information details so if we go into network here and we want to get advanced information about our Ethernet we click on this arrow and then we click on advanced and we get a new menu giving us DNS THCP IP information and all that but if we want to be able to do that for Wi-Fi it doesn't work if we go back here click on Wi-Fi and when we click on advanced it's not here there's a shortcut to be able to get to that information. If we click on search here and just type in DNS, we can see DNS domain networks, click on that, and now we've got our Wi-Fi information menu where we'll be able to see that information. So that's a quick workaround. I wanted to touch on Open Core Legacy Patcher here and Mac OS Ventura support. Again, if you haven't seen my other video talking about uh, the current status of Ventura, it hasn't changed. There's still a lot of work being done by the Open Core Legacy Patcher developers, and it's still not recommended to even attempt installing it yet. And it could be months before it's even ready for initial testing. There probably will not be that many updates here until there's maybe a major breakthrough. But again, they're working really hard, and the recommendation is to hold off from attempting to install Ventura on your unsupported Mac for now. I also wanted to talk about the new M2 MacBook Air. It's available on July 8th for pre-orders, and if you wanted to be able to pick it up in the store, it's available on July 15th. I'm going to keep an eye out for any benchmarks or information coming out in the next couple days, and I'll make sure to keep an eye on my Twitter if you want to see more information about that. And that's it for my Mac OS Ventura Beta 3 video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And I want to thank all my viewers and especially my Patreon members. You guys are absolutely fantastic and I really appreciate you. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks. Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here and Apple just released Mac OS Ventura Beta 3. And in this video, fudge for my macOS Monterey Beta 3. Oh my gosh.